Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're doing a review of Dying Light for the Nintendo Switch. So originally released in January 2015 and then ported across to the Switch in October 2021. Is this another one of those impossible ports or should it have been left well alone? Let's find out. The story, so taking on the role of Kyle Crane, you go undercover for the GRE, the global relief effort, and you're sent into the quarantine zone to find a political figure called Rays, who has vital data which could be used to create a cure. Moving on to the gameplay, so the game is a first person open world survival horror game. As you play through the game, the world will gradually start to increase in size. The game's main mechanic is parkour. This gives you an increased option of your fight or flight response, as you can climb, jump, use zip lines, grappling hooks to traverse the open world. If you don't feel like running, you can use a huge library of weapons found and created in the game. You have the option of equipping four throwing weapons such as knives, uh, DIY grenades and molotovs and you can also equip four other weapons so these range from police rifles to shotguns or a simple plank or pipe. Depending which version of the game you get your options for customising these weapons will vary. Pressing A will allow you to use Survivor Sense, which helps you to find any loot or zombies that may be hiding. Clicking down the left stick allows you to sprint, and then R is your jump or grab button, which is very important for the parkour mechanics. And then Y allows you to search zombies, cupboards, fridges to help keep your inventory stocked for crafting anything you might need throughout the game. As you explore, you will find various safe houses. These are usually overrun with infected. Take out the infected, turn the power on to retake these safe houses and turn them into safe zones. This gives you more access to traders as well as having less distance to travel during the night time if you're ever trying to escape. The game's main feature is that it uses parkour, but also a day and night cycle. During the day the infected is slow and easy to avoid or kill. At night infected become faster and more alert. Although much more difficult at night, XP is doubled at night time. At safe houses you can time jump if you prefer to skip the night time altogether. The graphics, so I normally obviously record directly from the OLED but this doesn't have a direct record option so I had to play this through my laptop and use my capture card and I would say that the game does look much nicer playing this in handheld mode. When I was recording the footage I was quite shocked at how different this looked playing even on a small 15 inch screen so I can't say how this would look on like a big 40, 50, 60 inch screen, but just from my experience, I would say this does look much better on that smaller OLED handheld screen. So this doesn't actually have a fixed frame rate. So what you're seeing is somewhere between 30 and 40 uh, FPS, depending what's on the screen. And if you're in a really busy area that's full of zombies, if there's lots of explosions going on, this can drop to around between 20 and 25. My overall experience graphically has been fantastic. As I say, I, the only time I've had to play it on a bigger screen has been to record some footage. But on the OLED, I've absolutely loved it. The load times are fairly good. The longer load times are when you're entering the tower or if you're moving say from the old town but apart from that they're still pretty pretty quick and pretty impressive. A few other people have mentioned the tech size but it hasn't bothered me at all. Some people might say it's a little bit too small but to be honest I've had no issues reading it so it's not actually caused me any issues.
Dying Light isn't actually available on the eShop in the UK. So you can get the Platinum Edition for £64 off Amazon. And then you can get the Definitive Edition for £49 off Amazon. I know it's a slightly older game, but at £49, just for the amount of game you get for your money, you get loads of DLC. And even forget the DLC, just the base game, you're looking at the best part of 30 hours, you could take this a lot lot longer and you can keep playing this after you complete the main story as well so you get a lot of game for your money for that 49 pounds definitely worth it i don't think i've really done the game justice with this review um i spent a long time playing it and i didn't want to write a review until i'd actually finished the game and then i have absolutely loved the game i love the story I love the parkour, I love the day and night cycle, I absolutely love everything about this game. And trying to do it justice in this review, I don't think I have, so I just wanted to finish off by saying how much I've loved this game. And it's definitely one of those games that you need to own if you own a Switch. It runs fantastic, looks fantastic, definitely worth picking up. If you've enjoyed this review, obviously hit subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Take care everyone. Thanks a lot guys. Take care.